I change the fonts on my web page? Let's have a look at the web page here. How do I change those fonts? Specifically, how do I change the type? You know, what uh, this is just your basic, looks like Times New Roman. How do I change that? Because we've got, looks like this is Arial or some sort of sans serif font. Um, how do we change the fonts on our website? How do we change the font size? Um, because that looks bigger than that. How do we do that? Well, I'll tell you how. First of all, before I go ahead, we need to talk a little bit about fonts. And we need to talk about what's called WebSafe fonts. Um, and uh, the reason that WebSafe fonts, what I'm looking at right here, this is a really great resource, w3schools.com, terrific website. And and um, I'll have this, this link in the show notes. Um, but there's some commonly used font combinations on the web, and they're used for a reason. Because here's the thing, if you have a look at your style sheet here, and if you look at your HTML document, um, the HTML document doesn't have any reference to fonts, but here we could actually do things. We can actually specify that we want a certain font family, and this is the a correct attribute for a font family. And then the font, the, val the font family value is going to be like whatever the name of the font is, right? So name of font goes here, and you know, never. This is incorrectly formatted, so please don't go and type this. But I'm just using this as a as an illustration. Um, but before I, I explain how that works. Works, let's talk about, you know, where where do these fonts come from? Because can we just use any font? Unfortunately, we can't. We have to actually stick with what's called web safe fonts. And to understand why, you need to think about how web browsers display pages. The only information that the only the only files that web browsers really have access to when they're showing your page is what. Well, let's have a look, okay? Um, that's the wrong file. This is what we're looking at right here. Um, so if, if they're looking at, if, they're, if the web browser is opening up a, a, an index study, you know, an HTML file, it has access to that. And then because you've included the link to the style sheet, it has access to the style.css. And then, you know, if you have images, it has access to those images. There's no font files in here. So it has to rely on whatever fonts are actually already installed on the user's computer, not your computer, but the user's computer. And when I when I say user, I mean whoever is surfing your site at that time, your website. And you know, the sad fact is, you have absolutely no control over what fonts that person has installed on their computer. Now, there are certain fonts that we're fairly certain are installed on practically all computers, all Macs and PCs. Um, and so those are the fonts that we call web safe fonts because we're pretty sure that most of the population has these fonts on their computer. But let's say you've got some crazy font that you've you know, either downloaded or you bought it or somebody gave it to you and you think, oh, I love this font, I wanna use this on my site. Well, you can go ahead and use that. You can name it, you can identify it in Text Wrangler here, or sorry, in your CSS file. You can put it right there. And guess what? It's gonna show up great on your computer. But as soon as you go to a different computer, your friend's computer, somebody else who doesn't have that font installed, if it tries to, the web browser is gonna try to load that font, it's gonna try to find that font in the system and isn't gonna find it. And then they're not going to be able to display that font, so they're just going to display a boring old, you know, whatever, default font. And then, you know, your great design is out the window. So um, there are some ways around this. There's actually some new ways around this, but but for the most part, just out of the gate, you need to be aware of what the web safe fonts are. And um, they're actually, when we talk about web safe fonts, we're actually talking about web safe font combinations because I mentioned, I alluded to the fact that there's both Macs and PCs and or that there's certain font fonts that are installed on both Macs and PCs. Well, the reality is they're actually very, very similar fonts and they're kind of called different things. Um, so when we talk about font combinations, we're talking about a series of fonts that you want to put in your CSS folder or your CSS file, oh. um, and and you're going to name the fonts in the order of preference. So like font one, comma font two, comma font three, and there, so there's your attribute, your attributes right there, and the value is these three right here. You don't have to have three; that you can have as many as you want, but this is just the standard order. And what you're telling the browser is you're saying, okay, I want everything in the body to be I want to change the font family for everything in the body, and I want you to change it to font one. And if you can't find font one on the user's computer, then I'd like you to try to find font two. And if you can't find 
the font 2 on the user's computer, then I want you to use font 3. And so this is what it looks like in real life, okay? It's something like this. This is, this is at, um, what we're going to use as an example right here. See how we've got here Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif. Let me go and copy this. I'm going to paste it inside here taking care to remember to keep our semicolon here. And I'm going to save this. And what's that saying is, OK, I want you to look for Arial on the user's computer. And you know, chances are, Arial is a very common font, so chances are the user is going to have that. But if for some reason they don't, let's say they're on, I don't know, an older Mac or something like that, um, the default for the longest time was Helvetica is similar. It's not identical, but it's similar enough you know, for most people. Um, and then if for some reason you can't find that, then I just want you to default to the first sans serif font that you can find. And by the way, if you're wondering about the difference between sans serif and serif, um, that's kind of outside the scope of this of, of this tutorial, but there's a lot of great resources online and I can maybe um, pop a, a link in, in the show notes about that so you can understand that. So, so that assures that you have a fairly consistent, you know, font that's going to appear for everybody no matter what computer they're on. Let's save this and let's have a look at this. I'm going to take a look here. I'm going to switch over here and I'm going to hit reload. And look at that. We've changed the font to Arial. And because I, I know I have Arial installed on this computer. So now we've changed the font. Pretty cool, eh? OK, um, what about the font size? Well, this is where we can use the attribute name called font size. And it just goes like this. It says font dash size. There's no spaces in there, OK, uh, colon. And then font size, there's different values. There's different types of values that can go in here. I like to use percentage values because that assures me that everything is going to scale accordingly. It's going to scale. It's going to be relative to what would be the baseline font. Um, I don't like putting, you can technically put absolute numbers in here, like this font size. I generally find that that's a bad idea because some people just like having their font size set a little bit bigger by default on their browser. And and so, you know, I, I don't like overriding that with my code. I want to respect that. If somebody has, you know, a vision problems and they want their code to be, or not their code, their text to be bigger, then they should have the right to do that. And I shouldn't be messing with that with my code. Um, so I'm going to use percentage sizes. And here, because the H1 is something really important. I want this to be really big. So I'm going to say I want it to be 300% of what a normal font would be, font size would be. So let's go ahead and reload this and keep an eye on this and keep an eye on how this changes, okay? There we go. Nice and big. Yeah, okay. So that's nice and big. How about the rest of the text? Um, the rest of the paragraph text, I'd like it to be font size. Um, I'd like it to be 120%. I want it to be just a little bit bigger than than what it currently is, OK? And I'm just I'm just picking these numbers arbitrarily. You can pick whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to save that, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to hit reload. There we go. This is getting nice and big. Um, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So we've changed the font family, the font type, by doing this. We've changed the font size. That looks pretty good. And one last reminder, if you are looking for different font family combinations, um, this is there's lots of resources online, but you could use any of these. And there's some examples here of what the text will actually render as. Everything from comic sounds and trebuchet. And, and um, here's the difference between serif fonts and sans serif fonts. This is uh, Palatino Linotype Book Antica. These are all considered you know, commonly used font combinations that are considered to be web safe. So you all you would need to do is here I'll actually maybe I'll 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 use courier this courier new courier monospace as an example here. I'm gonna pop this into here just to replace this to show you what it's gonna look like. So let's hit save and let's go and re let's reload this. There we go. Let's change the font. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and change that. You might have noticed, why is this in double quotation marks? That's because any time you have a font name that is actually, that has a space in it, that consists of two separate words with a space in it, you must put it between quotation marks. Otherwise, the browser could get screwed up when it's reading it. All right, let's go back here. Let's actually, I'm going to switch it back to the, this is handy. This is a handy page to have bookmarked, by the way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select this, Arial Helvetica, and I'm going to replace this to 
what we wanted. I'm going to put that right there. And notice we don't need to put sans serif in quotation marks because there's actually a dash connecting those two. So let's save that and go back to Google Chrome and let's reload. There we go. All right, that's it. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.